Hello, and welcome back to our Urban Voices. I'm your host, Dr. Alphonse Javed, and today I'm joined by former investment banker and Miss India International turned geopolitical expert and media entrepreneur, Priti Opala. Our conversation today is going to be slightly different from most episodes, as uh, we are going to focus on the sport cricket. Um, it's the sport that I grew up with, and uh, we want to also look at why people in the U.S. should care about it. While cricket is not well known in the U.S. at all, it's extremely popular and even a form of a soft power globally. It plays a major role in many urban areas around the world. Before we jump in a little bit about uh, our guest today, in addition to the outstanding credentials that I just uh, mentioned, she is a woman of many traits. She, is, she, is pub- she has published over 200 articles featuring her political expertise and is involved with many think tanks and institutions. She's originally from Dubai, was raised in Australia, and currently living in Los Angeles. She also has a forthcoming book, The Global Game. So please uh, look out for that. Once it comes, I will love you to grab a copy of that. And this book focuses on cricket. So naturally, we have uh, our guest on this show uh, so that we can talk about cricket from a global perspective. So thank you so much for joining us today. Pretty, how are you? Well, namaste. Uh, Thank you so much, Dr. Javed, for having me on your wonderful Our Urban Voices podcast. It is truly a pleasure to be here with you today and your listeners and to have this amazing conversation. I am having uh, a beautiful day. I'm about to uh, uh, embark on a European adventure for a film festival in, in a few days. So very, very excited indeed. That's so awesome. And I hope uh, people follow you wherever you go. And you are definitely uh, making a difference in, uh, in many ways in the world. So pretty, because we mainly have a U.S. audience, I'm going to start off by giving our listeners a quick description of the game. The closest game that Americans could compare cricket to is baseball. You have a pitcher, a batter, and outfield. But instead of running around bases, the batter and the pitcher run between two short sets of vertical posts called wickets. The goal of pitching is to to knock off two small wooden pieces resting on the wickets. If you want to learn more about cricket, you can find more info in the episode description below. All right. Now tell us, Brie, what is so special about cricket? Absolutely. Um, and you, you, your intro was brilliant because you, you said, why should people in the U.S. care about this sport? Well, it, it, it's funny because it's actually the second uh, biggest, most viewed, most lucrative, most popular uh, sport in the world, second only to soccer. And I will predict within you know 2050, it could even be number one because of the size of the market. Um, and uh, it's uh, may, uh, many of the other Anglosphere countries uh, really love this sport and uh, it's a big deal over there, but it's only the US where it's still an enigma. And uh, it will change slowly. It will change. They may not get into it, obviously, the way the people in subcontinent or in England and Australia do. But I think it's important that a game this big n- needs to be more known, I think, at least in the U.S. Now, and I uh, think, yeah, and I, um, I'm sorry for interrupting. I, I, I really enjoy that uh, you are the one who is talking about cricket. I mean, uh, one a woman perspective to a woman who is uh, writing a book on uh, um, with a political perspective on this. And I thought that's like perfect for our podcast because uh, our urban voices is not only urban voices in the U S but it's, it's also a diverse voices uh, uh, from different ethnicities, from uh, different genders, but also from different uh, countries. And, And when I was um, looking at your uh, uh, credentials, I was amazed how uh, you have um, uh, 
you have evolved. You can you can see uh, your passion, and it just it's just so different that a woman has. Uh, um, so why women care about cricket? That, I'm, and let me just I'm I'm trying to be as nice as I can because uh, <laughs> it is cricket and uh, it's dominated by men. Mm. So why a woman is talking about cricket? I know that it was not part of our conversation, yeah. uh, but it just it just intrigued me. No, no, great, uh, great question. And uh, it is um, uh, sort of, uh, you, you, I think your point about uh, diverse voices being heard, uh, and especially on a topic like this, which is uh, it really the subcontinent dominates this, right? Mm -hmm. So anytime you have, a, you know, you want to have a conversation on something like cricket, uh, you know, it's one thing to have, you know, an, an, an Aussie bloke talk about <laughs> it. And it's very different having an Indian woman coming right. from that background talking about it. You never see it. Um, right. And I think it's important in so many ways. And ultimately, cricket is really a metaphor for everything. It brings in culture, race, class, right. uh, religion. And uh, it's, uh, you know, what happens off the field is, uh, you know, a uh, metaphor for what happens on the field. And I think that's the perspective with which I view it. And when I write and speak about it, I'm coming from a very different perspective, not just a, from a technical perspective point of view or just looking at the game as a sport, which is probably what 99% of the cricket fans would, they would view it like mm -hmm. that. I, because I come from political and even a philosophical background, my view on this sport is very unique. Mm -hmm. And I think nobody really talks about it even in the world. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think it's a, just a personal choice. I grew up um, playing with my brothers, uh, with my brother and his friends, and I grew up loving the game. And uh, it's, it was just a personal, I actually love sports in general. I also love soccer and uh, tennis, uh, hockey, basketball, gymnastics, many, many other sports. I've always been a sports lover. And uh, that was, I think that's just a personal preference. Um, so other how, women may or, yeah. Yeah, sure, go on, go on, sorry. No, I was saying other women may or may not enjoy it that's i think their prerogative i think one should never be forced mm -hmm. um to to like it or watch it and i think the women who do genuinely appreciate it i think they they, they really like it they really like the game mm -hmm. and uh that, that's a wonderful thing so how do you define soft power in reference to cricket ah wonderful so firstly we should talk about soft power in what it is uh in general, and then right, we can right, look agree. at the cricket perspective. Now, um, soft power was a coin termed by Dr. Joseph Nye of the Harvard University. And essentially it's power which is not hard power. So it's power that is not neither military nor nuclear. Mm -hmm. And yet it has the ability to co-opt the rest of the world into its perspective and its way of thinking. That's mm -hmm. the power that a nation has to, I would say, co-opt as opposed to coerce. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, and I think soft power without hard power, mm -hmm. it, unfortunately, it leaves the state uh, kind of weak. And hard power without soft power isn't very effective. So you ultimately, you need both. But mm -hmm. I think the most powerful countries in the world are hard powers with an incredible um, sort of level of soft power. I mean, for example, Thailand is a country which I would say big on soft power, huge on tourism and, you know, just mm -hmm. everything, their culture, their food, even the spiritual aspect. But then they don't have, they're not a nuclear power. They don't have mm -hmm. a huge military to speak of. Then you look at a country like North Korea, which is a nuclear power. Mm -hmm. And I'm not so sure what North Korea's soft power would be, actually. So, you know, that's the dichotomy. I think a country like America has both. A country like India also has both. But I think, ironically, its hard power is actually stronger uh, because it has a very strong military. Uh, mm -hmm. And its soft power, although the ingredients are there, it hasn't, I think it could do a better job at projecting it. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, so specifically mm -hmm. coming to cricket, mm -hmm. I think as our conversation goes on, um, we will see how suddenly the sport has become like a symbol for mm -hmm. 
like this dominance and this uh, arising India, right? Like a new India, mm -hmm. a new Bharat is somehow synonymous with its incredible dominance in this game. Like uh, the, the nature of that dominance, not so much the quality, but I would say the just in numbers, in right. in scale and size, it's ridiculous, it's colossal. So when you you can look at sort of India's rise as a as an economic and a geopolitical power, and then you can look at India's this incredible rise in this game of cricket, mm -hmm. which so it, they're very they're parallel stories, I think, and mm -hmm. they are tied. I think as we will see, they are tied in many subtle ways. Yeah. Actually, I was watching this, um, uh, I think it's a documentary movie uh, where um, uh, it's a couple day, his, his, uh, when he won the World Cup and the way he approached and the statements he's using, he's using in, in the, in the, um, it's a Netflix, I think it's a Netflix movie. Um, and I was amazed because uh, the idea there is that everybody is, uh, uh, clearly saying that, oh yeah, you guys are uh, free, but you are not has you have not gotten our respect yet, mm. and uh, you can play, but you are not there yet. So it was like very much like um, like you still still um, in terms of this this game, you are beneath us. And then of course he wins, right? Yes. So um, and that's that's the whole uh, idea of that movie, which was very moving, and you can see politics and power. Uh, being played, even the guy who was the the main guy who was uh, leading the team, right in the World Cup, he doesn't have money. He goes there; they do not give him access to this uh, main hall or main uh, area where the the game will take place, the final one, because they know that they can't get there. And he said, "One day I will come back," and he does. <laughs> so it was powerful to just see the whole, as you said, uh, power being played, yeah. right. And is a soft, um, uh, I, I think it was a soft power there too, because at the end, uh, it was a victory, both uh, yes. uh, mental emo and emotional. Um, and anyways, so can you give me an example, unless I stole your example, <laughs> can you give me an example about how cricket has soft power? Well, uh, I think, so when we, we will come to the IPL eventually. IPL is the Indian Premier League. It's very similar to the English Premier League. So it's a tournament. It's mm. a, a domestic Indian tournament. But what they have done brilliantly is they've got international players that play for these sort of domestic Indian teams. Okay. And it is, I would say, second only to the English Premier League. It's probably the most lucrative sport in the world. It's a multi-billion dollar wow. uh, game. And uh, the franchises are run by billionaires and the ridiculous amount of, I mean, the, the TV rights for this tournament uh, is in, in, enormous. You know, I've been, several years ago, it was, um, you know, I think in the millions and now it's, it's, I, I don't know how much it's going to be sort of five years from now. It, mm -hmm. it only keeps growing and you look at the ratings and the eyeballs and uh, it's incredible. And all of that, you know, I, I think today, you know, back in the day, I think even for an English, for an Indian cricketer to go to England and play at Lords mm -hmm. was a big deal. Mm -hmm. And to study in the UK was a big deal, right? Today, mm -hmm. the young uh, English county cricketer, his dream is to play in the IPL. And you would wow. be surprised how many young, if you really, you have to watch the interviews of yeah. uh, some of these uh, international players because they're pretty candid and honest. And you listen to them and they're like, whoever is listening, I'm ready for the IPL, baby, sign me up. I mean, because they know that the amount of money and power and fame, I think that they will get is more than their entire sort of um, domestic career back in their country, whether it's Australia or England. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of cricketers, I think before the IPL came in, cricket was not a rich sport in this. It was an elite sport played by rich people, but it, there was no money in it as such. And now it's, you know, again, it's become one of the most lucrative um, tournaments mm -hmm. and, and the whole game has lifted because I think what the IPL generates uh, financially and economically, it supports the whole game internationally mm -hmm. and it supports other boards as well indirectly and that money really trickles down in so many ways so i would say that's an example of soft power where now you have these um 
international foreign uh, english speaking you know western countries and their dream is to play in india for yeah. for a little indian town because yeah. they they know that their life is going to be made and some of them actually uh, perform far better for their little ipl team than they do for their own country so it's that's the the i think the dichotomy of uh, the world uh, that we find ourselves in i think and definitely this game i think represents what is going on in the world for sure so um ipl indian premier league yes. um and you said that it is doing really well that even international um uh cricketers want to go and play in india right so would you say that governments investing more in local cricket facilities team etc would would bring uh, a greater return on investment than other types of uh, government services and uh, it's okay if you disagree with that too i'm just wondering ah so yes yeah, so, so i mean this is a cheeky comment even i've made this in the past i've said ipl has done more for indian soft power mm -hmm. than you know the the whole foreign service put together in some ways even bollywood has done that to to wow. be fair i think bollywood has done more for indian soft power than mm -hmm. our diplomats quite frankly so in the same way uh you know i i just make a, a cheeky comment i will say that uh, bcci which is the cricket board in india um has done more for uh just india is sort of the uh, for it has gotten more people out of poverty than than the government wow. uh, i mean i'm being a, a little tongue in cheek there however i will say they have done their fair share i think yeah. government of india does uh, they have ministries that take care of different aspects railroads education uh you know empowerment poverty hunger all those things um the bcci uh does its bit and its job is uh the um you know growing the game in, in, in india and also taking uh care of uh players and all of that but by bringing in ipl and just with this huge um how lucrative mm -hmm. cricket has become uh, it does so much because when it builds you know stadiums it's that's infrastructure it's a lot of development that's happened um and there is so this this is a multi million dollar sort of sport now in india and the money that is generated it trickles down it goes into right. uh, small towns has lifted thousands and thousands of people players their families their extended sort of uh, the communities out of poverty it's given them an incredible sense of belief and power and um, you know also they're run by these huge industrialists like the ambani's uh who own reliance and um, mr mukesh ambani is the one of the richest men in india mm. uh, he owns mumbai indians one of these teams i mean the amount of investment that they have done in their local community and in their city for the youth for development for grooming young talent and uh, just inspiring kids and fitness and sports is enormous yeah. priceless right and every franchise has done that and now it's become a pan india thing so you have the whole country that's benefiting i think um i do want to say that you often hear in the western media and uh some of the some of the other cricketing boards and also sometimes their journalists and non indian or non subcontinent cricketing fans i would mm -hmm. say who uh, they love to take a dig at mm -hmm. the indian board right at the bcci they love to just whatever you know they want to make um you know it's easy easy target very easy to sort of and they never get any pushback because it's the, the bcci never sort of responds to that so uh, you know it's easy to sort of criticize them but i think they would not be able to do half the job had they been given that money and power because it's an enormous job yeah. and mm -hmm. i think the bcci has done a phenomenal job to grow the game not just in india but to make it international mm -hmm. and to make it this spectacular sort of sport um and it's been pretty diplomatic i would say mm -hmm. uh in many ways and i i think they should be commended for what they're doing in and i'd like to see these uh, you know the, it, these statements always come with a tinge of envy mm -hmm. and um Mm -hmm. a lack of humility to maybe 
accept that the power now belongs to somebody mm -hmm. else and okay. you will never compare with those numbers and you will never be back there it'll never happen mm -hmm. so be humble and right. appreciate india yeah. i think for what it's doing for cricket globally. yeah and i i the thing that i uh thought while you were talking the empowerment of youth and giving them belief the inspiring the next generation and even the current generation yeah. um especially when a country is uh, uh growing and building and becoming in the midst of that it's important to have uh, some sort of anchor uh, right so mm -hmm. in 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 the midst of so many um awful habits and uh, powers that are against uh, young people um i think this is a wonderful thing to um direct people to sports sports in general it teaches you discipline it teaches you hard work it helps you to focus on the right thing and that helps you to stay away from some of those bad habits so yeah economical aspect and uh, political and all the other things are one thing but i think on a social level what it does to a person psychologically what it does to a person is amazing mm -hmm. so now on a geopolitical scale um do you think cricket could benefit relations uh, between uh, um um countries uh, for example here we are a pakistani and uh, an indian talking americanly historically india and pakistan have been uh, bitter enemies uh, do you think cricket could benefit relations between uh, our uh, um, uh, you know former nations uh, uh, between Pakistan and India, something can happen. Yeah, absolutely. And and also I want to point out that cricket really is the ultimate unifier. It brings the world together. Uh, it, um, it it its impact is truly beyond the boundary, mm -hmm. so to speak. And uh, it bridges countries and nations. And even when you look at India vis-a-vis -vis England and Australia or New Zealand, it's uh, the dynamic has changed. I don't think you see an intimidated or an ashamed India today. You right. know, with 50 years ago, that was the case. Right. And today, uh, because of India's economic and sort of geopolitical rise and pro mm -hmm. prowess, I would say it's stand in the world um, because I think the GDP of India recently overtook the GDP of the UK in PPP terms. Oh. So this is, I mean, the irony of, of the world and time, I think, on how things truly sort of go, come, full, come back full circle, which is what's mm -hmm. happening. I think what we're seeing in the world today is actually a shift completely um, in the balance of power yeah. in the world. And yeah. the, the, the Asian century is the new story. And mm -hmm. that subcontinent is the... Um, the heart of the Asian story, all mm -hmm. the subcontinent countries, mm -hmm. including Pakistan, by the way, they are, uh, you know, th this is where really the future is. Um, right. And and 50 years from now, the greatest rise, the greatest sort of super st uh, story of the rising superpower will be the Indian story. Mm -hmm. uh, now, going back to uh, specifically with the India-Pakistan dynamic, um, People forget, you know, 75 years ago, uh, it was one country. Mm -hmm. So we must never forget that we are the same people in many ways. And I think sometimes, uh, you know, whether it's education system or uh, some political people would love to sort of distort that reality. And Correct. You know, they are trying to make people think that your ethnicity is something very different and your identity is you're not Indian. That is your main identity. And, and that's very dangerous, I think, because, mm. you know, you should never forget. Uh, ultimately, you know, look, all humans are, are we are the citizens of the planet in many ways. Mm -hmm. um, and specifically mm -hmm. with India and Pakistan, yes. So my, you know, little background, I grew up in Dubai. So I grew up playing and watching cricket with my Pakistani neighbors and also with my uh, all of my neighbors were Muslims uh, from either India or Pakistan. So I was truly the minority there by the uh, fact that I was Indian, but also the fact that I was not a Muslim in a Muslim country. So, but that was the, my uh, upbringing, I think. And I enjoyed it so much. It added so much richness. 
And so I know the explosive nature of the India-Pakistan games. I think those are the, um, the most viewed, the most um, anticipating or anticipated uh, games, I think, in the world. I mean, an India-Pakistan World Cup final would be, I think that would be the most watched <laughs> sporting um, yeah. event in history. <laughs> I mean, even the That's World true. Cup, you know, the Cricket World Cup in 2019, the semi-final with India and New Zealand, I believe, had more eyeballs than the actual final, mm-hmm. right? So this is the power. And even the final, most of that was watched by Indians anyway. So the irony of, of it all, I do think that it's good for the game, for the countries to mm-hmm. to play. It'll be great for both teams. And um uh, however, I would say as a fan, I, I want to see that. It's so exciting. I can't wait. But I think when you look at ground realities, um, I think the ball is really in Pakistan's court. I mm-hmm. think if they want to have cricket with India, it's they can. we are so open for that. Uh, we have always been open. They can have all the cricket. But I think as a state, they need to be uh, more responsible. And you can't have, I think, like terrorism and sport don't go together. So I think the BCCI made a stand, uh, a kind of a firm stand uh, several years ago, actually, that, you know, you can't have this sort of people, soldiers dying at the border and then have cricket because that wouldn't, that's not, that's disrespectful to the, the parents of the martyred soldiers. I mean, they're being a bit dramatic there, but but that's the sentiment. And um, so I think the takeaway from this is, this is actually a huge opportunity for Pakistan uh, because this is an incentive, you know, open yeah. the door, you know, go for it. Uh, mm-hmm. I think we are, India is very open. We can, we've coexisted with people uh, mm-hmm. all throughout our many thousands of years existence. Mm-hmm. And uh, we don't have, I mean, if we can have such re- nice relationships with England, somebody who colonized us and in- invaded us for 200 years and look at the dynamic today, surely, uh, you know, uh, people that are really ours uh, or or we are the same. I, I think there's no reason why uh, we shouldn't be playing cricket. But I think there is the caveat. I think um, you can't sort of have this, you know, terrorism across the border and then expect to have mm-hmm. the game because, the you know, a, a cricket tournament will benefit Pakistan a, a lot economically. And uh, so it's like a, a sort of carrot, you know, I think right. it's only an incentive. Yeah. So um, you already alluded to this, uh, but I'm, I'm just going to come back to this question. How does the dominance of India and cricket globally coincide with India's rise economically and geostrategically? Yeah, great, great question. It's funny because it's the, the that story has risen, I think, um, very much in parallel because today right. I see an uh, an Indian team that on the field I've never seen them more confident and more mm. aggressive and assertive, which is great I think. And mm. uh, when I see, I know in my own living memory I've never seen uh, Indian uh, either Indian Indians who live around the world or the Indian traveler who goes everywhere, I've never seen them, I think, mm-hmm. hold their head up high more right. than they do today. I really see that. And, um, you know, cricket plays its part in, in, I think, again, the image, the soft power, like it's done a lot, I think, for brand India, so to speak. And um, it should continue because I think in the Olympics, I hope that it is introduced in the maybe the T10 or the T20 format, and then the whole world will really see what that T20 is about, and that'll add another dimension. I have heard that uh, the 2024 T20 World Cup will be held in America, so now oh. the American market is going to be introduced. <laughs> it's awesome. big in the Caribbean, so the Caribbean and the US are jointly going to host it, and I hope I can be a part of that whole <laughs> <laughs> show in some way, but. Um, I just think that it, you know, uh, my only concern is uh, the, the small amount of Indians who who actually don't, who, who dislike cricket, who think that this is a colonial sport, we shouldn't be playing this, we are uh, enslaved again through it. And I think that kind of mindset doesn't help 
anyone. Mm. And there are people still in India who want to do away with cricket altogether. And they think that, I mean, th- look, there is an underbelly in every sport mm. as there is in cricket. Um, they want to just throw, I think they want to throw the baby out with the bathwater, mm. which um, I think is not very wise. I think you need to mm-hmm. see cricket for the power that it gives you and for the soft power that it is for India and try to work on just targeting the problem areas, mm-hmm. which they are, and do something about that. Don't get rid of it. I think it's the one area where you actually dominate globally. And I know that Indians love to, they want. They say that they want to be this great superpower and this wish for guru, you know, this spiritual guru to the world. Mm-hmm. They make all these statements, but ironically, they're not there yet. And mm-hmm. I don't know when and if we will get there. Um, they would like to see their music and their cuisine and their culture more appreciated globally, which I don't think is the case yet. But there's this one area where they actually dominate in a, in a mm-hmm. ridiculous fashion. And I think they're not acknowledging that. Mm-hmm. So there is, I think, some of the problem lies in the Indian mindset to all of this as well. Yeah. So this potential um, World Cup in here in America, perhaps we need to um, start getting people ready here, right? So how would you suggest an American audience to get started in cricket if they are interested? And oh, yeah, that's where, fantastic. Where, yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah, and where can they tune in easily to watch games? Wonderful. Um, they, uh, they, they will, they sh- and it does take some time to sort of uh, warm up to it and, and sort of get yourself ready. Uh, so people don't realize that America is the second largest cricket, um, I guess, uh, market in the world, even though How they come? don't. Yeah, well, the eyeballs, because the diaspora here um, watches, they tune in. And -hmm. also, I think the diaspora here, all the diaspora, the entire subcontinent diaspora, plus the English, Australian, New Zealand, South African, and the Caribbean uh, diaspora who live in the U.S., they are financially very well off, Mm -hmm. and they have a lot of disposable income. They will... Uh, you know, they will watch and celebrate this game and they'll pay for it, uh, you know, sort of handsomely, which is what's going on. Um, So I think uh, even though there's no national team yet, uh, we are, we have a major league, we have a minor league. I think we're working our way up to hopefully getting a national team sometime, but um, the places where you can tune in, if you live in America, you can go to Willow TV and I think it's a part of Sling TV. So you go to those two places, they do air a lot of the games there, most of the games there. I think you can subscribe and you can tune in. Of course, there are live uh, you know, feeds and broadcasts and this you can, on radio as well. You can tune into many different English, uh, Aussie or even Indian stations that sort of broadcast these games. Um, and uh, I mean, you can try checking out IPL website, of course, the ICC website, the BCCI website also has very good videos and things like that. But I would say if you are a big basketball, uh, sorry, a baseball fan in America, I think you will enjoy and appreciate cricket for what it is. So if you're a huge baseball fan, trust me, get into cricket. I think you'll really enjoy it. It's like a more explosive version of baseball, I would say, certainly, you know, and the the energy is very, I think, more, much more dramatic um, and dynamic because of yeah. the, the crowds mm-hmm. and the color and the music yeah. and everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, if, if listeners wants to get in touch with you, Preeti, and, and or to find your uh, upcoming book, where are, what are the easiest ways? Oh, wonderful. Thank you for asking me that. So I'm everywhere. I'm pretty accessible. Um, on Twitter, I am the Preeti Effect. So please okay. find me and, and follow me. On Instagram, I am also at the Preeti Effect. And please join me, follow me there too. Facebook, it, it's Preeti Upala. Uh, my website, preetiupala.com and the Preeti Experience.com will be uh, they're being redesigned. They'll be live soon. I have my own channel called The Preeti Experience on YouTube. And I have the audio podcast as well, which is also The Preeti Experience. And it's on all the portals, 
Spotify, Amazon, Apple Podcasts, all of it. Um, and you can find a lot of my videos, my interviews on YouTube and um, on Vimeo. And also I write extensively on all of these topics. And if you just Google my name and report or article or journalism or media, you'll see a lot of collection of my work and, and all of that. So um, please do find me, reach out. I think I'm, I mean, I'm very engaging. I love yeah. to hear from people. So That's great. Me. And uh, uh, that will also be included in the episode description. And as we wrap it up, uh, tell, tell me quickly about your family, which is so important uh, uh, for me. And I think for the audience, this makes us, uh, uh, it humanizes us. So uh, very briefly, give me just maybe like 20 second uh, okay. um, summary of that. Wonderful. I give credit to everything that I am in the world today. Honestly, it's because of my parents and because of upbringing and the fact that they Im imbued this culture, uh, culture, traditions, faith, all of that from a very, very young age. Um, and we've, we, we've lived around the world, but I think our traditions never uh, left us. And that has taught me to I can go anywhere in the world and I can feel at home. I feel very much a part of um, the fabric of society over there. Uh, you know, uh, they taught me to be open to the places where we lived in and understand that we were a guest there. We were very much the minor. My whole life, I've always been an outsider and a minority. And that's taught me, I think, maybe the humility to look at things in a bigger way. So I, I give credit to them. And even specifically with cricket, you know, my father is the one who introduced the sport to me. My brother used to play the game and he was pretty good. And I sort of, if it wasn't for him sort of encouraging me to join in and, and play and watch, I, you know, I wouldn't have developed that passion for sport at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I give, I think, a lot of credit to my family, my parents. I'm very close to them. And uh, they're still my biggest uh, uh, fans and biggest supporters today. So it's, it, it warms my heart. <laughs> yeah. All right. So tell me a joke. That's how we're going to end the program. <laughs> well, so, I don't have a joke for you, but I do have a small anecdote, which I think will, will be the perfect sort of um, analogy for our conversation today and sure. for this topic, which is deep and heavy and yet important. So I wrote um, a piece uh, on cricket and soft power, very much what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. It was actually uh, the the uh, title, the, the biggest sporting event in the world. And it was uh, the India-Pakistan match in for the 2019 World Cup, which I believe was one of the most viewed games ever in history. Mm -hmm. So I wrote a piece for that um, and I it was accepted, it was published um, at, a, uh, at an Israeli Jewish outlet a, a huge wow. um, like times of israel <laughs> and uh somebody read that article and they wrote to me i got an email and he said i read your amazing article i loved it i don't know anything about cricket but thank you for introducing me and he happened to be he was neither jewish nor was he israeli he was english and he was a christian and at the end of the email he said by the way i am visually completely impaired i am wow. blind and i read your article on a special braille tablet so i mean i'm i was just i didn't have words wow. for that but then he told me i was so intrigued by your article that i um went to my church and i spoke to my vicar about it and guess what? His vicar was Pakistani, <laughs> and and the and the vicar was crazy about his cricket. And they had a conversation <laughs> about cricket. I mean, like, what are the odds of a person living in Los Angeles, uh, you know, in in instilling this conversation between a a a, a visually impaired mm -hmm. uh, English Christian guy who knows nothing about it talking to a Pakistani vicar? I mean, the that is the story of cricket. And I think that is the, also the story of diversity, multiculturalism, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, inclusion, openness, tolerance, religion, faith, beauty, everything that we aspire for. Mm -hmm. I think that is basically that in a nutshell. You know? wow. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on the show, uh, Pretty. Again, that was uh, Pretty Opala.
Yes. And, uh, uh, did I pronounce correct? You, you did, Preeti Upala. And thank you, Dr. Uh, Javed. It was such an honor to have this brilliant conversation. Uh, I speak about different things, but this particular topic, not I don't speak enough of it. And I should be uh, sort of voicing out the beauty of it more because I think it's a very important one right now for what's going on in the world. Absolutely.